Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave 2.0. I would like to thank all of my subs and supporters who watch, share, like, and comment on the videos. In addition, I have to give a big up to all of my people who purchased my masterpiece, The N-Word is No Secret in the Service. If you would like to purchase this masterpiece, just go to the link in the pinned comment. Thanks again, everybody. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, here's some American tragic family news here. This story went down back in 2021 in the state of Florida. Now, this story here is not that, you know, it, it probably is not that important to a lot of us, but it is tragic and it's a shame what happened because of who's involved in everything. But here's the thing. This story right here should have been main news everywhere. And there's a reason why it wasn't, you know what I mean? Uh, it just goes to show the hypocrisy in the, the you know, the media. This, let, let's get into it, man. Listen to this story right here. We have a man right here named Paul Reinhardt and he's, his wife, Mindy Reinhardt, okay? They live in Florida. They do pretty well. They have two young sons, one of them, 14-year-old Rex and 11-year-old Brody, okay? They're in their uh, mid-40s, the two of them, Paul and Mindy Reinhardt. Now, Paul Reinhardt is the president of a medical company in Gainesville, Florida, called Reinhardt Medical, LLC. Uh, this is a company that sells medical devices. Now, his wife, Mindy, she is the vice president of this company. So this is a family company, you know what I mean? Medical device company. This, this, this uh, company does, does well. The Reinhardts live pretty well. They have, you know, pretty good, they got money, you know what I mean? So family business, husband and wife, successful business, okay? Living in Florida, they're white, they have money, they appear to be happy. That's supposed to be, you know, a happy American story. Now, their two sons are very involved in baseball, okay? Now, the two sons, uh, they're both youth, youth baseball players in the area, and both of their parents are friends with the University of Florida head coach Kevin O'Sullivan. The whole family, the, the boys, 14 and 11, the mother and father, they're friends with the Florida Gators head coach named Kevin O'Sullivan. Now, Kevin O'Sullivan is a very popular man in the sport of baseball. If you don't follow baseball, you probably don't know who he is. Uh, he's the coach of the Florida Gators. Again, his team made it to the national championship last year. Uh, I think they came up short to LSU. But in the baseball world, he's a, he's a big name. And amongst you know, a lot of people, he's a big name. So here's where this story hits a turning point. One day, the husband, this guy, Paul Reinhardt, right? He was posting weird stuff on Facebook. This is back in 2021, y'all. He posted 64 wedding photos. After he posted these, these photos, he texted his wife, Mindy Reinhardt. This is at 5.39 in the morning. He texted her. And the text read, you should have put your family first. Now it's too late. You're so selfish. You're going to live with this the rest of your life. I forgot to add, people. Paul Reinhardt and Mindy Reinhardt are actually separated right now. Uh, they live in different places. Paul, he's living in the house that they have in Gainesville. I don't know where Mindy was living at. That's where, you know, that's where Paul lived at. I don't know where Mindy is. But he's texting her, and he's putting this weird stuff on Facebook, man. So Mindy, the wife, she goes and she calls 911 because something's not looking right. Her sons are with Paul. It's not looking right. Uh, so she calls 911. In the meantime, she sends Paul a text message back. It says, please don't hurt yourself or our boys. Please come home. Paul didn't respond to Mindy. So the wife, Mindy Reinhardt, she races to, she goes to the house in Gainesville where she thinks they're all at. She figures, I'm going to go ahead and get to this house, you know, where they're all at. You know, she, the guy's acting weird or whatever. Now, when Mindy gets to the house, nobody's there. Nobody's there. She goes to her old house where she lived at with them. Remember, they're separated. So this house is in Gainesville. She figures he's there texting her, and he's at this, this house posting stuff on Facebook. She goes there. He's not there, okay? Now, everyone's looking for this guy, Paul Reinhardt, because, again, Mindy, she called 911. He's acting like a nut on Facebook. He sent his wife this alarming message, okay? So the county deputy had heard that Paul Reinhardt's van was at their vacation house at a property he owned in Dixie County, which is 50 miles away, okay? 
So they had been looking for him and they did some checking and they and the police heard that his his van was at a vacation property that they have in Dixie County, 50 miles away. So the sheriff deputies where he's from, his main residence, reached out to the sheriff deputies over there. It's like 6.39 a.m. now. It's about an hour after he was posting this nut stuff on um, Facebook. So Verizon reported Paul Reinhardt's phone was turned on and it was closest to a tower near his vacation home, okay? So he's pinging near the vacation home. A tower's pinging. Okay, people, and also keep in mind, remember he started this at 5.39. It's uh, 6.39 in the morning, not even 7 yet. Verizon is already on the job. They know where, he, where, where his uh, phone last pinged at, okay? They said, oh, he's at the vacation home. So the sheriff in his, back in his hometown and the sheriff in the county where his vacation home is are communicating. So in the meantime, the sheriff in the county that's near his vacation house goes to the vacation house. Said, let me check this out. He's probably here. Also, in a mix of all that, one of his neighbors by the vacation house called 911 at around 715 to report that Paul Reinhardt's vacation home was on fire. Okay? So firefighters arrived to this phone 19, I mean to this house 19 minutes later, but they said the fire was too intense to enter the home. When they finally did get in, the firefighter found one of his sons on a bunk bed, Brody. Brody was on a bunk bed. The other son, Rex, was on another top bunk. And Paul Reinhardt's body was collapsed at the end of the bed. All three of them were already gone. Paul Reinhardt had used gasoline, lit the house on fire, and he went and took his two sons out of here, and then he took himself out of here. What a coward. What a coward. Hey, people, we're going to get back. We're going to keep going. But you notice how I said that uh, this dude, how Verizon was already on that an hour after he made the, uh, made the messages? For this white man and his white family right here, they was already on it at 639. That, that should show you something right there. They can do whatever they want to do. You know, they can track stuff down if they want to. Anyway, here's something interesting, you all. Paul Reinhardt has a brother. This man right here who just did this to his children and himself, he has a brother named Eric Von Reinhardt. He's 49 at the time. In 2014, his brother went to his ex-wife's house in Lutz, Florida, Okay. So he went to his ex-wife's house. He's not with her anymore. Goes to the house, kicks in, sees his ex with her new boyfriend. He fatally stabbed the ex. This dude's name is Alex Iliff. Took him out of here. He was looking for his ex-wife named Amy. Her name's Amy, by the way. But she was hiding in the closet, and she called 911. After he did this, remember, he took his, he took his ex wife's boyfriend out of here, into his life, okay? In the meantime, he's trying to turn his knife on himself and use it. He wants to take himself out of here too. He wasn't successful. He's currently in a prison serving 40 years after pleading guilty to a second degree murder and a fatal stabbing, okay? So look at this. So his brother, after he did this in 2014, his brother, Paul Reinhardt, the one who just took himself out and his sons, paid for his brother Eric's legal defense costs after he was arrested. So how eerie is that, y'all? These brothers both tried to take themselves out of here over a woman, you know? One of them, it was already over. The brother in 2014, it's your ex, it's over. He still went over there to harm her new, uh, new guy she was seeing. And this guy Paul here, he was still married to her though, but they was going through whatever, separated. But he's so disgusting and so cowardly, he can't even spare his sons. These people, they got some... They got some real nut DNA in them. I don't, I don't know what's going on, man, but they got some psycho DNA in them. These two brothers both try to do the same thing. So, people, here's where a big question mark and scandal comes in this right here. And this is why, if anything, this story would have been big news or should have been. Remember I said the Reinhardt family was friends with the Florida, Florida Gators head baseball coach, Kevin O'Sullivan? Big time Division I baseball program, Florida Gators. The head coach, Kevin O'Sullivan, their sons were very good baseball players. The whole family, the Reinhardt family was friends with all of them, okay? So this guy, head coach Kevin O'Sullivan, he used to be an assistant coach before he got to the Florida Gators, used to be an assistant coach at Clemson in South Carolina. So when he was at Clemson, he was assistant coach at Clemson. He had a fiance there and she soon became his wife. Her name is Barbara Joe Davis. So he had a fiance when he was at Clemson. 
Um, and he soon married his fiance named Barbara Joe Davis. Now, he applied for the head coaching job at the Florida Gators, okay? So he actually got the job. So what he had to do was go ahead and move to Florida. And at the time, he was in a long-distance relationship with his fiance. He's in Florida. She's in South Carolina. She eventually moves to Florida with him, um, her, his fiance named Barbara Joe Davis. And uh, they got married and had two children, okay? And uh, that's what happened with them. So he has a wife, two children. Um, she moved to Florida with him to be with him as he's the head coach of the Florida Gators. Now, along the way, this man, Kevin O'Sullivan, who was the head baseball coach for the Florida Gators, he divorces his wife. Him and his wife got a divorce. I mean, nothing crazy going on as far as people know. They just decided to get a divorce. They have two children. Now, remember, people, I said that the Reinhardts, that man who took his life and his two sons, they were close friends with this Florida Gators coach, Kevin O'Sullivan. Paul, Mindy, and the boys, very close friends. So here's the deal. After the nut husband off, the, off himself and the boys, right, their mom, Mindy, she marries this Florida Gators coach, Coach Sullivan. She said that he gives her new purpose. Now, that's very weird right there. Um, again, she was separated, but they were always friends with this dude. This guy was married. He eventually got divorced. After this man, Paul Reinhardt, who was also friends with him, with the head coach, the whole family was uh, friends with this head baseball coach at the Florida Gators, okay? Florida, University of Florida, Florida Gators. They're all friends with him. After the husband, Paul, took his sons and himself out of here, right? Their mother married this coach, Coach O'Sullivan, the Florida Gators head coach. Now, you know, this story, a lot of us probably wouldn't get all into it, but look here, man. We have a coach at a major Division I program. This is the Florida Gators baseball team. Very well-known program, very well-known coach. They made it to the national championship. He marries this lady, Mindy. Mindy, the mother of this, and the, the, I mean, she's, she's a mother of the two boys and ex-wife of this nut, Paul, who off himself and his boys, right? Coach O'Sullivan's good friends with the family, People have been speculating and saying things, you know what I mean? Nobody knows what the truth is, but this wasn't even a major scandal story, man. Like, they didn't even put this... When this man made it to the uh, national championship game, not one time did they bring this up, that he, you know, was the uh, uh, husband now of Mindy, whose husband, ex-husband, uh, uh, well, she was married to a man who took himself and his sons out and they were all friends with this Florida Gators. Not one time was this in the news. Not one time during the game when he was playing before, after the game, people didn't ask him questions like, hey, listen, coach, can we talk to you? Let us know what's going on in this story right here with your wife. Man. None of that. You know what I'm saying? They didn't question him about him being connected to this tragedy, not saying what his role was in it. But come on, man. I mean, you were all friends, dude. You were all friends. They knew you. And as soon as this happened... You go marry the wife. I mean, he could do what he want, but this is my thing with this. Again, we don't know what happened here, but had this been any other kind of coach, football, basketball, a black man, a black coach, he wouldn't have been able to do anything, make a move without having cameras, shoved, cameras and mics shoved in his face asking him about this. The entire world would know. They would make everybody hate this man, even if he was innocent. You know what I'm saying? It would be so bad we'd get tired of hearing about it. I mean, this is just a story, man, some hypocrisy in the media, y'all. Um, we expect this, though. We expect this. But listen, something else. Did you see how fast Verizon was on that? And they went, the police, the sheriff's office went and they tracked where this man was at. That He started off at five something in the morning before seven. They were already... I mean, a little after seven, they were already, you know, tracking his phone. So that goes to show you what they can do when we hear about these missing black children, these missing black women, these men, missing black men who were somewhere and they end up in the woods hanging from something. Oh, we couldn't do this. We couldn't do that. We're just going to rule it as this. These people can do whatever they want. You know what I mean? It's just that they don't have respect for our humanity and they don't go all out when it's us. But look how they went all out for this nut to find him. Because those, you know, those little white boys were there. You know what I'm saying? His two little white sons. But anyway, some hypocrisy in the media, some hypocrisy and um, inconsistencies with the uh, 
with law enforcement and first responders type stuff right here. Anyway, easy. <laughs>